Hello and welcome to day three of LSTV's coverage of the University of Leeds This Girl Can, Uni Girls Can Week and today myself and Jake are joined by a very special guest by Dame Sarah Story. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, first question is obviously you are part of the Uni Girls Can Week and um, here at the University of Leeds. What do you think this campaign is having an effect and, and what made you want to join this? I think it's really important that we encourage everyone to get involved with activity and be have a healthier lifestyle. So for me, when I had the opportunity to work with the university in a town where I came to university as well, although it's not this university, it was really important to help um, promote the uh, possibilities for people to get into sport, particularly for girls to get into sport. We know by the time most young women have got to university, they're given up all the sport they did at school, if they did any at all. So to be able to start to put back into the idea that they might become fit and healthy whilst they're at university and leave with even better prospects once they graduate is a, a campaign definitely worth getting behind. So you came to university with uh, five gold medals already to your name. Uh, I'm going to ask you first about Barcelona 92. How was that? Your first Olympic Games, you win two gold medals. Tell me a little bit how you felt. Yeah, Barcelona kind of feels a little bit like a dream. I, I looked through it with rose-tinted glasses, I suppose. I was just at the end of my year nine at high school, so when I came home from those games, I was trying to start GCSE courses and then on, obviously go on to A-levels. I actually got my A-level results on the pool side in Atlanta in 96. Um, little did I know when I embarked upon that Games in 1992, but to go to a place where everything's free, you press the button on the vending machine and a can of Coke comes out if you want it, you press another one, another one comes out, so you need to find a friend. Um, just incredible to rub shoulders with the sort of athletes that were there. And I had mentors at those Games in the shape of Tanny Gray Thompson and, and Chris Holmes, and both those people are now sat in the House of Lords as incredible people that have done so much in their life and I still look up to them and thank my lucky stars that I was able to rub shoulders with people like them who guided me through that first games and like you say to two gold medals. And obviously you said um, as soon as you came home for those Olympics you were starting university here in Leeds. How did you sort of balance obviously with Leeds Student TV but, and being a professional athlete is sort of not, not many people do but how did you balance a student life and obviously being a professional athlete at the same time? Yeah, well, I got my results from my A-levels on poolside in Atlanta, and then I discovered that I had been accepted over to study here, study sport and exercise science up at the Headingley campus at Leeds Metropolitan University, as it was called back then. Um, and it was an, an interesting time, like, trying to combine the studies. Obviously, not every single day is jam-packed nine to five with lectures, but it was trying to find time in the lab to do studies. I suppose in some ways I was really fortunate that I had access to so many elite athletes. So when it came to doing my dissertation, for example, I was able to study some of the best athletes in the world. Um, and also when I was doing sort of physiology studies, I had access to all sorts of different swimmers around the country that I would ring up and ask if I could do you know, testing on them. So that was probably one of the fortunate sides of it. It was all obviously difficult to combine. Uh, by the end of my studies, I had chronic fatigue syndrome. Uh, I'd been travelling back and forwards from my hometown down near Stockport, um, over the other side of the Pennines, back to university over here in Leeds. So that particularly took its toll on me. But um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I look back very fondly on the support that I had from my university here. And um, I always say, you know, I, I studied in Yorkshire, so I'm a little bit Yorkshire. I think I won Yorkshire Sports Personality yeah. of the Year while I was here. So um, the people over the other side of the Pennines thought that was very funny. <laughs> Uh, sticking with the sort of balancing your time with training, uh, obviously you've got another commitment now that's not university. How are you finding training and being a mum? Oh, it's fantastic to come back into sport having had my daughter um, just over two years ago. When I fell pregnant, I'd done everything I ever wanted to do in sport and some. You know, I'd never imagined that I'd get to a home games in my own career, let alone win four gold medals as I did in London. So when I fell pregnant, I knew there was absolutely no pressure on me to come back as an athlete. Uh, I obviously wanted to try and if I was successful, then that was a huge bonus. So I always said that going into cycling as a second sport was a massive bonus. And now I feel like I'm on my third bonus. So hopefully my luck won't run out before the games in Rio next year. But Louise is fantastic. She's a really happy little girl. She loves following us around. We are involved with our own cycling team now that myself and my husband run and she loves being around those girls and cheering us on at bike races. And the funniest thing for me is when I come around a corner in a time trial or a road race, for example, and there's Louisa laughing at my race face. So it's great fun to have her on tour and I really do wonder what we ever did when we didn't have a little toddler running around. Of course, as you say, you and Barney have little Louisa. And a part of this Uni Girls Can campaign, how important do you think it is for parents to get their daughters into sport, you know, obviously your daughter's so young, but when she gets to age, and how important do you sport, think sport is in growing up? Sport is a huge part of, of my life and it will always be that and I think it would be great to think that every single person in the world, men and women, young and old, would consider to take part in sport as just a normal activity. So 
Louisa may or may not become an elite athlete, that will be down to her choice, but we'll always encourage her to be fit and healthy. And just taking part in activity, walking instead of taking the bus, riding your bike in, instead of taking the car. And those kind of little changes that you can make to your everyday lifestyle really do contribute to being fitter and healthier. And especially when you're at university, I think the interesting thing with university is there's all sorts of pressures, especially on a Wednesday night when sport's finished and you're going out and you're going down to the students' union or there's always an activity or if you do the famous Leeds pub crawl, from way out there up north, right the back way back into the city centre. There's so many things to distract you away from activity, although I guess you could count the walking between pubs as activity. <laughs> but it's important to try and have um, activity in your life while you're at university because the fitter you are, the healthier you are, and that applies to brain health as well. And if you're able to study more effectively because you're fit and healthy, then that's really important. So I think all parents should be encouraging in a gentle way their daughters and their sons as well, but their daughters in particular, because we know girls will drop out more easily than guys. Uh, to stay fit and healthy and we hope this week will help promote that even more. You mentioned earlier about the switch from swimming to, to cycling. Um, it's amazing what you've done in both sports. What promoted the switch? What made you uh, make your mind up on that? Well, I think kind of going to, back to the theme of this week, making the switch was because I wanted to stay fit and healthy when I had ear infections that were keeping me out of the swimming pool. So I used cycling initially as just a cross-training tool. I wasn't allowed to get in the water, so I'd go in the gym and get on a bike instead. And while my friends were swimming up and down the pool training and my colleagues were doing that, I was in the gym pedalling away and trying to keep my heart and lungs fit ready for when I was allowed back in the pool. So it started out as just an activity to stay fit, and then it ended up being that I wanted to race because I'm a bit competitive like that. Uh, and then when I was kept out of the water for an indefinite amount of time, when ear infection number six struck, um, it started to become a case that really I needed to race more competitively in this bike thing. Um, and before I knew it, I was being talent spotted by British Cycling. Uh, and then after that, I was taken to the European Championships where I somehow won two gold medals. I still had an extra six centimetres on my shoulders at that point, so I was very much a swimmer on a bike, but they, with help from my husband, who's always been a cyclist, and a number of incredible people, I managed to tone down those shoulders, get into a more aerodynamic position and, and pedal away, as it were. So, yeah, it's interesting that it's the activity side of things that really got me into that switch, and I guess that's what helps make it even more perfect that I can promote something like this. Yeah. And finally, just to touch on Rio, which has come around so quickly, um, I saw the other day you'd like to defend all four of your titles. When does training really start to knuckle down for that and, and how do you, do you think you're going to achieve that? Well, we've been qualifying our positions for Rio, so every country has to qualify places that then they can allocate to different athletes. So over the last year and a half, I've been putting points on the uh, in the bank, as it were, to hopefully secure myself a place for that team. Uh, winning the four gold medals in the World Championships in the last two years has obviously helped my cause. I need to continue to be fit. So I'm about to finish the end of my 2015 season of racing. That'll finish uh, on the 23rd of October, and then I'll have a couple of weeks of downtime. And then I guess it really starts in earnest for Rio even more so than it has been already one more world championships on the track next March and then a full road season and bizarrely at the age of nearly 38 uh, I'll be turning professional for next year that'll give me access to even more difficult races to race even more difficult people and hopefully teach me a huge amount more so that when I come to those games in Rio and that almost impossible task of winning four gold medals again hopefully I'm in the best prepared state so yeah in answer to whether I can hopefully but um, it'll be a big ask, but I'm, I'm up for the challenge. Well, we both wish you all the best of luck and thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.